In this video tutorial, we're going to show you two methods to enter time for employees that you supervise. The first method involves going to work order tracking. Work order tracking can be found by going to the top part of the menu where it says go to. Click there, scroll down to work orders. Now go over to work order tracking. In most employee start centers, you also see a work order tracking link on the left side of the screen. Now let's type in a work order, such as sick leave. This is on the left side of the screen in the field titled work order. Once you click on the work order, you're going to want to move over to the actuals tab. The actuals section shows all time entries made against this work order. To make a new entry, you're going to need to create a new row. And this isn't always easy to find. Depending on most screens, it's kind of hidden. You need to scroll to the far right side of the screen where it says new row. Once you've created a new row, you can see this whole section opened up here. You're going to want to populate the important fields in yellow, such as the employee's name under labor, typically the first initial and last name, or you just type their name. Once you click on it, it now populates their hourly rate as well as their craft code. But you still want to pick the shift, such as day shift, night shift, swing, etc. Pick the date, the most important one. Make sure this is the date that you want the hours to charge against. And then lastly, choose the quantity of hours for that particular day. In this example, we're going to put an 8. Once you've done this, all you need to do is go up to the top side of the screen and click on the Save Disk icon. Now you're all set. You've just successfully entered a new labor entry through the work order tracking method. The second part of this tutorial is going to show you a faster method for entering multiple entries for a particular employee. Located in the similar section under the Go To menu, Work Orders, just below Work Order Tracking, is Labor Reporting. This is also commonly found in the links over here on the left, Labor Reporting. After clicking the Labor Reporting link, what we're going to want to do is go to the top of the screen and one of these icons here with the construction hat and the clock behind it takes us to enter by labor. Here we're going to type in the labor ID for an employee such as Marco Diaz. Once we push the tab button, it will load Marco Diaz and then we click on new row to make a new entry. From here, this opens up a familiar menu. We're going to go down to the work order field, type in the work order number for sick leave, and like most fields in Maximo, be sure to push tab, not enter. Once we do that, we go over to hours and type in eight. And then we're gonna pick the date. So in this example, we're gonna go pick November 9th. At this point, all you have to do is click OK and you would create a new entry. But perhaps you wanna enter multiple entries. So we're gonna say new row again. And what that's gonna do is allow you to quickly add more entries. So if someone was out, say for example, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you can just put Monday's date, Tuesday's date, and Wednesday's date from this area. Say OK after you finished all three, and there you go. You've now entered in time for that employee for three days in a row. Well, I hope that helps. In Maximo, there's a lot of ways to get things done. That just happens to show you two methods for entering time for employees. That'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching.